Cinemachine is used to create complex camera movements seen here in the Time Ghost video created inside Unity. In this series of videos we are going to take a look in detail at the various ways to use Cinemachine in your projects. Cinemachine can be used for anything from small to large scale productions. They can be used for both gameplay and animated cutscenes. This is the first of five videos in the Cinemachine series. The first video looks at Cinemachine basics and types of Cinemachine cameras. The second looks at using Cinemachine with Timeline for animated sequences. The third focuses on 2D Cinemachine cameras for 2D games. The fourth looks at Cinemachine cameras for player control characters. And the fifth focuses on top tips when using Cinemachine in your projects. Cinemachine takes control of the main Unity camera. Think of them as a camera controller, or much like a cameraman. This means you have just one actual camera in your scene. A Cinemachine camera is very lightweight and does no rendering of its own. So you can add multiple Cinemachine cameras without affecting performance or frame rates. You have a full range of professional camera templates that work straight out of the box. Cinemachine cameras can hold a collection of components that can be combined to make any type of camera you need. These can be procedurally controlled cameras that follow a target, or static cameras that sit in place anywhere in your projects. These can operate without any coding required, however you can also easily customise them with coding if you want. The Unity camera has a Cinemachine brain that allows the first Cinemachine camera to control the main Unity camera. The Unity camera moves to the second Cinemachine camera's position using a blend. The components on this Cinemachine camera are now controlling the Unity camera. The third Cinemachine camera now takes control and the Unity camera moves to a top-down view. Cinemachine gives you a wide set of tools to control your Unity camera to achieve professional results. Let's look at how to set these up. Go to Window, Package Management and Package Manager. Install Cinemachine from the Unity Registry. This is version 3.1. Download the samples which contain scenes showing how each type of camera works. I am using the Unity Warehouse asset free from the Unity Asset Store. I'm in the Warehouse Sample Scene. Create a Unity Camera from Game Object and Camera. I have switched off the Player Controller. To add a Cinemachine camera, go to Game Object and Cinemachine. You will see a range of camera types, but we will choose a basic Cinemachine camera to begin with. When you add a Cinemachine camera, it is placed in the same location as the Scene View camera. In the Game tab, you see the Unity cameras now move to the Cinemachine camera's location. When the procedural components are empty, this Cinemachine camera can be animated or controlled by a script. However, as soon as you add a position control, this becomes a procedural camera, and that will override any animations or script movement. The Cinemachine camera when using procedural position should not be parented to another moving game object. Let's set this up so it looks at this forklift and pans around to follow as it drives away. From the Rotation Control drop-down we have a few options. I will choose Rotation Composer. This requires a target for it to look at. I will add the forklift to the target slot. In the game view we can see the yellow dot showing the position it is tracking. During play mode, click off the Cinemachine camera to remove the game view guides. The camera stays in position but rotates to follow the forklift. Click the Save During Play checkbox so you can save any adjustments made during play mode. During play mode, click and drag in the very centre and you can change the screen position, framing the targeted object on screen how you want it. You can also adjust the target offset to focus on the driver instead. When you exit play mode, it will ask if you want to keep the changes you have made. Damping smooths out the rotation movement. The higher the value, the slower the rotation. Dead zone can be very useful when you want more control over the camera rotation. The size can be adjusted during play mode on screen. 
When the yellow dot is in the central area, the camera does not rotate. This is the dead zone. When it touches the blue sections, it begins rotating. To change from a static camera to a moving camera, add a position control component. We have a few to choose from. I will use follow. Notice the game view updates. It is now positioned to follow the forklift. I will adjust the Y of the follow offset to lift it up and adjust the Z to move it closer. The damping will soften the movement. If these are set to zero, they will follow every movement the object makes precisely. Sometimes that can be a bit jerky, so it's best to have some damping on movement. The camera is now always positioned in the same location relative to the target, no matter how it rotates. If you want it to also match the rotation of the target, choose a lock to target. In this case, I will use no roll. Now it follows in that exact location, almost like the camera is parented to the target, although it isn't. We have created our own Cinemachine camera setup. If you add a follow camera, you will see the components are the same. The Cinemachine cameras from the menu are pre-set up with the correct components, and you can use these as a starting point and change the parameters as needed to make the type of camera you need. Let's add another type of camera. First, switch these current Cinemachine cameras off by disabling the game objects. Add a free look camera. This requires a target to focus on, so I will choose this worker. It has added a three ring orbit style. This allows the Unity camera to orbit around the target. It uses a Cinemachine input axis controller to control the rotation around the target. This uses actions from a default input action asset that ships with Cinemachine. You can swap out the action mappings in the input action controller with your own actions from your own asset. During play mode, as I move the mouse, it rotates around the worker. Cinemachine cameras can be controlled with inputs. For example, when you want to control the view for things like city builder games or real-time strategy games. We will look into that in more detail in video 4, where we focus on Cinemachine cameras for player control characters. Add a third-person aim camera. This is used for third-person characters. I will use the forklift as the target. Unlike the free look camera, the third person aim camera does not provide any user input control, but instead places the camera at a mostly fixed point relative to the target. Rotation would then be handled by the character controller. The red vertical line in scene view is the length, which can be raised to the correct height. The red horizontal line is the camera distance, which can be adjusted to move the camera closer or further away from the target. The camera side moves from right shoulder to left shoulder. Add a dolly camera with spline. This is used to create smooth camera movement along a spline path. It adds a new Cinemachine camera that is used in the spline dolly for position. Click on the dolly spline container to find it in the hierarchy. Move the spline object to where you want your camera to start moving from. Click on the edit spline button and drag the end knot to where you want the camera movement to end. Click on the Create Spline button and click in the middle of the spline to add a new knot. Press Escape to finish editing. Now click on this new knot and drag out to define a curve. I will set the forklift as the target and adjust the spline offset on the Y to raise the camera. For the movement along the spline, I will check the automatic dolly and use a fixed speed of 0.08 and add a bit of damping to smooth out the movement. During play mode, the camera moves along the spline while rotating to look at the forklift. Add a dolly cart with spline. Notice this does not add a new Cinemachine camera, just a spline and dolly cart. Multiple Cinemachine cameras or objects can be parented to this cart. This can be useful when blending between multiple cameras that are each at the same position along the spline. Move the spline into place. On the dolly cart, enable automatic dolly and from the method, choose fixed speed and set 0.05 for the speed along the spline. Move the end knot closer to the forklift in a slightly diagonal line. This time I will create a straight spline and set up a handheld style camera. 
Create a new Cinemachine camera, ensure the position is left at none, as this will be parented to the cart, and will inherit the cart's position and movement. For the rotation, I will choose Rotation Composer and set the target as the forklift. Drag the Cinemachine camera onto the dolly cart to parent it to it, and zero out the position axes on X, Y and Z. From the noise drop down, add a basic multi channel purling. There are multiple presets you can choose, or you can create your own. I will choose Handheld Normal Strong. During play mode, the camera moves forward, but now has a handheld effect. When you have two or more Cinemachine cameras in your scene, you can blend between them. A blend is not a video crossfade like in a video editor, but the movement of the Unity camera from one Cinemachine camera to the next, using the LERP, a linear interpolation. With two Cinemachine cameras in this scene, the priority is using default, which is a priority of zero. You can override this and set a higher priority. The Cinemachine camera with the highest priority takes control of the Unity camera. When all of the Cinemachine cameras have the same priority, the last activated Cinemachine camera takes control of the Unity camera. The other Cinemachine cameras that are active are then on standby. The default blend type is decided by the Cinemachine brain. There are multiple types of blends to choose from, which we will see shortly. The default is ease in and out, which starts slow, speeds up in the middle, and slows back down at the end. The speed of the blend can be set here. A cut will instantly change from Cinemachine 1 to 2 with no movement of the Unity camera. You can set just ease in or just ease out. Hard in and hard out starts or ends gently. Linear has no easing, so moves at a linear speed for the entire duration of the blend. Custom allows you to define your own curve to control the speed of the blend over time. Default blends affect every Cinemachine camera in your scene. Sometimes you might want some of them to use an ease in and out, and others to use a cut. For this, use Custom Blends. Click on the Settings icon and create new blender settings. Now you have the option to define as many custom blends as you like. From the drop down you can choose any camera, or a specific camera. Then you can choose which camera to from the drop down, and specify the blend type along with the blend speed. So I'll have an ease in and out from Cinemachine Camera 1 to 2, but a cut when going back from 2 to 1. You don't have to specify blend types for all cameras. The ones set here will override the default settings. For any Cinemachine cameras not listed, they will continue to use the default setting. You can remove custom blends by selecting Clear from the Settings icon. I have two Cinemachine cameras that will blend using ease in and out. One is looking at the forklift, the other at this worker. During play mode, the camera seems to flip over in the blend. So we can choose a blend hint to help fix the blend, helping us to achieve the look we want. In this case I want to ignore the target on both Cinemachine cameras. Now I get the blend I was looking for. Different shots can deliver different blend movements. The tracking target and rotation of the camera does affect the blend. In this example I want to choose a blend hint of cylindrical position for both Cinemachine cameras. You can, however, use different blend hints for each camera. You can also set up multiple blend hints if you want per camera. We can set up a sequence using a sequencer camera. This adds two Cinemachine cameras as child objects. It controls the blends between each camera using instructions that you can set up in the inspector. The sequencer camera owns the Cinemachine cameras that are child objects, and keeps those separate from the rest of the Cinemachine cameras in the scene. The sequencer will then play through those cameras in the sequence set within the instructions. I only want one of these Cinemachine cameras, so I can remove the second camera from instructions, and then from child cameras. Notice it disappears from the hierarchy. I have a follow camera already set up. 
Drag this onto the sequencer camera to add it to the sequence. Note, the sequencer camera is a static object that doesn't move, so it doesn't affect the position and rotation control of any dynamic cameras. Now I can add the follow camera to the instructions and drag this to the top to ensure this camera plays first. The hold defines how long the shot from this camera should last. Then the blend in to the next camera determines how it should blend the two cameras together. In this case, a cut. I'll position the other Cinemachine camera in the scene view and align with view. This is a static, non-moving shot. You can add extra static cameras from the child cameras section. You can also add any extra components to its position and rotation control if you want. But I will leave this as a static camera. And add it to the instructions. Line up the shot in the scene view and align with view. Another way to add extra cameras is to duplicate the existing cameras. It is automatically added to the child cameras. Add this to the instructions. This extra child camera is going to zoom in. To achieve this, click on Solo to see just this camera in scene view and click and drag on the lens to zoom into the desired shot. I'll set the blend in for this one to ease in and out and have the blend take two seconds. Then set up the whole time for each shot. During play mode, it now plays through the sequence. Sequence objects can be switched on and off like any other object, so you can play the sequence of shots at any time during gameplay. The simple in-game sequence as a sequencer camera produces great results. However, for more complex animated sequences, use Timeline alongside Cinemachine, which is what we are going to focus on in the next video. State-driven cameras allow you to change between Cinemachine cameras when the animation state changes for a character or object. Let's take a look at how to set this up. Add a state-driven camera. This allows different Cinemachine cameras to be activated when animation states are being played for a chosen character or object. It creates one Cinemachine camera as a child object. I'll target this worker, align in the follow and hard look at values. You can add extra child cameras from the state-driven camera object, however, that means setting up the components again. So you can duplicate the existing child camera with Ctrl and D, or Edit and Duplicate, and it is added to the child cameras list. I'll modify the follow offset so this camera is looking at the worker's face. This requires an animator on the animated target to drive the cameras. The worker has an animator controller which has two animation states. Drag the worker with the animator component into the animated target slot. Now add instructions. From the state dropdown, choose the animation state you need. Then which camera will be active during that state. Then set the wait time before this camera is activated. Set this small for an immediate switch. Or if you want to delay, set the wait time to delay the switch here. Set the minimum amount of time this camera must be active. This is to prevent glitching if animation states are changing rapidly. I will also change the default blend to a cut. During play mode, the camera now switches when the next animation plays. And switches back when the first animation begins again. This is useful, for example, when you want different camera positions when a character is idle, walking, running, attacking, etc. We have looked at common types of Cinemachine cameras used in Unity projects. In the next video we are going to look at using Cinemachine with Timeline for animated sequences. For more information see the Unity documentation. Thanks for watching.